Hi, I'm Paul Rudolavich from Synergy Electrical Sales. Today, I'm going to show you how to override an occupancy sensor. This is one of the most common requests we get in lighting controls. In other words, how can I schedule when occupancy sensors are active? A good example of this would be an elevator lobby. Let's say I want to have my lights on in the elevator lobby from 7 a.m. and go off at 6 p.m. and have the motion sensors work from 6 p.m. to the following 7 a.m. So how we can do that. Now, advanced lighting systems, we can do that with software. We can do it easily and it works great. But let's say you just had two motion sensors that you wanted to schedule, just like I described, an elevator lobby. You want the lights to come on at 7 in the morning, stay on all day, and at 6 p.m. have the motion sensors take over. I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so I've got my typical setup with an occupancy sensor in a power pack. Um, 24 volt motion sensors coming from the power pack. And the basic process with these, it's pretty simple. We've got our 24 volts, and when we complete that circuit, lights turn on, and when the circuit breaks, they go off. So we have our motion sensor here. If you have multiple motion sensors, I'm just gonna use the little cover here to represent my sensor slide that over, and then represent my second sensor, they get wired in parallel, right? So we can just show our other two wires there. And both of these sensors have to have that circuit broken for the light to report back that it's vacant and turn off. So either one of them closes, the light stays on. So if we want to override our sensors, what we can do is we can take away one of these sensors and we can replace it with a time clock. So I'm just showing this here with a watch. Uh, in a minute, I'm gonna show you how we can do this with a real simple low voltage, 24 volt time clock. All right, so again, we still have that representing our sensor. Now we have our time clock. So we've got this nice little time clock. It's from Grassland, which is an Intermatic company. And you'll see the model number on the back. It's an FM1D. 14-24 and what's really nice about this time clock is it gets powered by 24 volts so we can use that same power that's powering our occupancy sensor and power this little time clock um, to override our motion sensor it's a din rail mount so just show you how it clips right in here okay so now we've got our timer and again, we're going to wire it in parallel. So when this timer closes, the lights are on and the motion sensor, the other motion sensor, um, even though it sees motion, will not turn off the lights during the time clock period. All right, so now I've got my time clock wired up and my motion sensor. They're both connected. You see the wires, they're connected. And I've got the time clock in play. Now the time clock, um, just to show the demonstration faster, I'm going to press the override switch. Here, click, click. So now you notice nothing's happening with the light. The reason we're not seeing anything with the light is that the motion sensor is still sensing motion. Now, I put the motion sensor in a timeout period for eight seconds. So if I hold still for eight seconds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I was moving a little bit. All right, and the lights went off. Okay, so it senses my motion, right? But if I press the override switch to on, meaning the time clock event is enabled, this contact is now closed, it means essentially another motion sensor is always sensing motion. So if I held still for those eight seconds, I'll just try it, nothing should happen. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I could keep counting because it's sensing motion through the time clock. Anyway, thanks for watching. Simple way to override motion sensors if you just have one or two and you want to do it with an analog method.